Hello everyone, welcome to your partner in education, Agile Rank Mate. Today, in this episode of ICAR training, we're going to be looking at some sample questions of the ICAR examination. We'll be looking at these questions from various subjects and how to solve them effectively. So let's start off. Here's a question from biology. Consider the following steps which are involved in cloning of foreign DNA into a plasmid vector. Isolation of foreign DNA, restriction digestion of foreign DNA and plasmid vector, ligation of DNA to plasmid, blue-white selection, transformation in cloning host. So these are the five steps. We need to choose the correct answer from the option given options given below. So we have five uh, ways to arrange these five statements such that they are in the right order. So if you look at the options, you see that statement number A, isolation of foreign DNA, is the first step in all of the statements. So it has to come first. Now, we're dealing with cloning of DNA and that occurs in plasmids. So plasmids are basically extracellular bacteria circular extracellular DNA found in bacteria. So um, these are present in special packages. So therefore, once the foreign DNA is isolated, it has to be inserted into this particular package. So therefore, it has to be ligated to the plasmid. So that's what comes next. Option, I mean, statement C. So A less greater than C. Now, once this foreign DNA is inside, it needs to be in, uh, inserted to the circular DNA. So that means some of the DNA has to be erased, and then the other has to be added. So here we look, so for that, the right step is option B, restriction digestion of foreign DNA and plasmid vector. Then once the DNA is inserted, it is then used to reproduce. And, the, and in doing so, we find a transformation in the cloning host. So because of the DNA inserted, it shows new properties. So that's statement E. And in order to separate those which have the um, transformation from those that are not, we use what's called a blue-white selection. So selection of the recombinant DNA, the recombinant bacteria from the non-recombinant ones. So A, then C, then B, and then E, and finally D. So this is how the right order is supposed to be. And if you look at our options, it's clear that option C is the right option. Now, if you're doing this in your exams, you could pro you can actually stop at C uh, because by that time you would understand that option C is the only option containing the first statement as A and the second statement as C. So therefore, option C turns out to be the right option. The other options are incorrect because in both A and B, uh, statement B is the second step, whereas in option D, statement D is the second step in the process, which is incorrect. Now, let's look at another question. Match list one with list two. List one contains manganese, potassium, magnesium, and boron. List 2 contains pollen germination, chlorosis in older leaves, necrosis, and photosynthesis. Now we need to choose the correct answer from the options given below. So we have A4, B3, C1, D2, A2, B1, C4, D3, A2, B3, C4, D1, A4, B3, C2, D1. So, how do we solve this? Well, it's a good idea to eliminate options by finding the most obvious match. So if you look at pollen germination, this is where the pollen tube is grown. And for that, uh, it's known that the most important element in order for the pollen tube to germinate is boron. So D1 is a correct match. Now, if you look at uh, the options that we have, then you can see that options C and D contain D1. So options A and B are incorrect because the statement D is, is matched to the wrong statement in list two. 
So now that we know it's uh, either C or D, let's look at the next obvious statement. Now, if you look at, um, uh, you can, now for this, you can choose anything. Another important statement would be that manganese is a key element for photosynthesis. So it's connected to photo photosynthesis. So list one, A connects with list two, four. So therefore that means you can also see that option D would have to be the right option because it's the only option that contains A4 and D1 in the same set. So therefore option D is the right option, C is incorrect. So that means B3 and C2 are correct. Potassium, a lack of potassium causes necrosis and a lack of magnesium causes chlorosis in older leaves. Manganese um, is responsible, is present in photosynthesis and boron is responsible for pollen germination. So that's how we solve match type questions. Find the, find the easiest match and then try to eliminate options to get the right one. Now let's look at some questions of chemistry. Which of the given reactions will yield an amine as a product with less number of carbon than the reactant. Now amine is basically a carbon chain with a functional group of NH2. So for this to work, we need to look at um, the four reactions. Now we need to find out which of the given reactions will yield amine as a product with a less number of carbon than the reactant itself. So let's look at let's look at reaction A. Reaction A contains nitrobenzene. When it's reacted with hydrogen and palladium in the presence of ethanol, it forms nitrobenzene, which is not an amine. So any option with A does not work. So option A is incorrect. Now, if you look at reaction number B, we have um, benzamide, and benzamide is reacted with lithium, al lithium aluminum hydride along with water, and this forms nitrobenzene. So again, any uh, option with reaction B is also incorrect, so therefore option B is incorrect. Now, if you look at C, it's again benzamide, but the uh, uh, what we call the, the secondary reactant is different. Here we have bromine and sodium hydroxide. So this would actually form aniline, NH2, along with a benzene ring. And in the in reaction D, we have um, benzonitrile, and benzonitrile in the presence of hydrogen and nickel forms a benzene ring with a functional group of CH2NH2. So as you can see, both uh, reactions C and D have the functional group of amine. But if you look at the reaction, it, if you look at the question, it's asking us as to find the product with less number of carbon than the reactant. So we'll have to compare the reactant and the product. Now in um, equation D, you have benzonitrile, and in benzonitrile, uh, there are seven carbons. The same is true for the product, which it has. So that means the product, the amine product, has the same number of carbon atoms, which means that it's not the reaction that will yield less number of carbons. So option C is incorrect because it contains equation number D. So that means equation number C has to be the right one because over here you have seven carbons on the reactant. However, there are only six carbons in the product. There's only the benzene ring. The CO has been removed. So therefore, option D, C only, turns out to be the right equation. So which of the given reactions will yield amine as a product with less number of carbon than the reactant? That is reaction number C. And this reaction is actually called Hoffman bromamide reaction.
Now let's look at our final question for this particular video. Um, we have two statements. We need to find the most appropriate answer from the options given below. So let's look at the two statements. Statement 1 says, first ionization enthalpy of zinc, zinc is higher than copper. And the second statement says, second ionization enthalpy of zinc is lower than copper. Now, let's look at both statements. Are they correct or are they incorrect? So if you look at statement 1, it says, first ionization enthalpy of zinc is higher than that of copper. Now, if you look at the electronic configuration of zinc, um, zinc has um, argon, 4s2, 3d10. Whereas copper has argon, 4s1, 3d10. Now, as you can see, um, zinc has fulfilled orbitals. So the first ionization enthalpy is to change Zn to Zn+. plus. Now, over here, it's quite difficult to get that electron out because it's in a fulfilled orbital. So therefore, the first ionization enthalpy of zinc is high. Now for copper, it's 4s1. And since the s orbital only takes two electrons maximum, so if you have one electron, then it's easier to take it out as well. So the first ionization enthalpy of copper is actually lower. So therefore, statement one is true. What about statement number two? Well, for that, we will need to take out zinc plus and copper plus. Now in zinc plus, you have argon, and then 4s1, 3d10. However, in copper, you would have argon, and then 3d10. Now, for the second ionization enthalpy, which is to change the, uh, which is to change the ion into another ion with two electrons missing, um, for Zn plus to, to be turned into Zn2 plus, you have to take it out of take the electron out of 4s1, which is easy because we saw the same case for copper. However, for copper plus, uh, the 4s electrons already gone. So we only have electrons in the 3d10 for the outer shell. And since it's a fulfilled orbital, so therefore its ionization enthalpy, the second ionization enthalpy of copper would be quite high. In fact, it's higher than that of zinc. So therefore statement two is also true. So since both statements are correct, then that means option A, both statement one and two are correct, is the right option. Option B is incorrect because it st says both statements are incorrect, and option C and D uh, make, says that one statement is correct while the other is incorrect. And if we were to choose one of them, then that would be wrong because the other statement is considered as incorrect. So that concludes this episode of ICAR training. We hope you found this episode interesting. For more of our useful and interesting content, don't forget to subscribe to Agile Rank Mate, your partner in education. If you want to get the latest updates about ICAR or any other examinations, then please don't forget to hit the bell icon present below the video and set it to all. So until the next webisode, take care, stay alert, bye-bye for now.